If you had worked with PageNation before, you might be aware of this common technique of splitting the content into pages and requesting new information for each page you navigate to. However, there is another pagination technique called infinite scroll. With this method, the pagination data continues to load as you scroll down, giving users the impression of an endless feed. Infinite scroll is primarily a client-side feature. It involves listening to the scroll event on the client side and loading additional data while appending it to the existing content on the page. I was wondering if I could implement infinite scroll using React server components. I stumbled upon a thread where someone asked the same question and Dan Abramov from the React team explained that the server side doesn't inherently know how to render the next page while keeping the previous one intact. But then I came across this tweet from a person called Alex on Twitter who mentioned using server actions to implement infinite scroll. So I decided to build something on my own based on his tweet and see how that works. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to build an infinite scroll with a combination of React server components, client components and React server actions. For the purpose of the tutorial, I will be using an API called Punk API, uh, which returns a list of beers based on the pagination information. Let's quickly take a look at the architecture of the app right before we start to look at the code base. Our page.tsx server component has two components. One component shows the list of beers we fetch from the server actions, and we will call it the beers component. And another component called load more which runs on the client side to fetch more data as we scroll. When the spinner is in the viewport, we trigger a fetch to get the data from the server actions and add this data to beers component, making it grow in size as we scroll, giving the impression of an infinite scroll. So the key thing here is that our server actions are used in two places. Inside page.tsx, which uses it during the initial render, and inside the load more component every time the user scrolls to the end of the page on the client side. If this is not so clear, it will be more apparent when we implement this in the next steps. I'll also add link to the GitHub repo in the description below. You can go take a look at the code and play around with it. For this tutorial, we are going to use Shad CN UI's Next 13 template and enable the app router during installation. And also install the card component, which we would use to build our UI. Once done, let's go inside Next.js config and enable server actions so that we can use server actions in our app. With our setup ready, let's go ahead and create our server action. Our server action will call our paginated API and return the data for us. So we're going to add use server as a keyword and name our actions as fetch beers and we're going to pass the page number inside and the number of pages that we fetch on each request is going to be 24 and we've also given the api url and we're going to await the fetch api and get all the information and return the data and once done we will also add a catch block in order to catch any issues that we may encounter and return null in such cases. So with that change, our server actions is ready. After we're done with the server actions, let's go ahead and make a types folder so that we can use the same type across the app. The type's gonna have the ID, name, tagline, and the image URL of the beer data. and also import the type inside our server action so that we know what data we are returning from our server action. I'm going to come back to the page.tsx file and use my server action to build my default view. The default view will have the beers component that will hold our beer information. Our beer information will be rendered inside a grid, hence let's prepare a grid in order to house our beers components. The grid component is still going to be inside our container, that is the app container. And I'm going to add some classes for our app container. And the app container will also have a title, 
and we're going to add the component and also the classes for our title. And after that, we're going to add our grid component. The grid will have by default one column and for small devices two and for devices MD and above, it'll have three columns. It's time to build our Bears component to be used inside our page.tsx server component. The Bears component uses the card component that we installed from Shatsian UI and renders a collection of card components based on the data we pass. And we're going to add a Bear props for our Bears component. And the props are going to contain the Bears data. And what we're going to do is we're going to map over the Bears data and build our card component. And we're going to use fields from the Bear data to build our card component. The first is going to be card content. It's going to be a flex box. And we're going to pop the image inside our card content. And we're also going to have a fixed height and the object contain classes there. And once done, let's go ahead and add our card footer. That's going to house our title and the description. So um, it's also a flex box and we're going to put the title as a first item and the description as a next item. All right, so this is our Bears component. I'm going to add the Bears component inside my grid and try to rerun the app. As you can see, it renders properly. Now it's time for us to build a component that triggers navigation on scroll. And for that, we need a spinner. Let's go ahead and build a simple spinner component in order to load more data. So here you can see that I'm adding the classes to just make a simple ring of a certain width and height. And to this, I'm going to add animate spin class. This would be a spinner for us. As you can see on the view, we have a spinner at the end of the page. Once it's ready, let's build our load more component that we talked about in the architecture. The load more component is a client component and it's going to have two states. The first one is the state for keeping track of the data of the beers. And the next one is to keep track of the number of pages that the user has already loaded. And on top of that, it will have an intersection observer that should call our use effect whenever the spinner component is in the view. For intersection observing, we will use a library called React Intersection Observer. I'm going to add a use effect in order to track the in view from the use in view hook. I'm going to make a simple flex box that would contain the spinner component, but we wanted to take the full length of the grid column. So for that, I'm going to add call span classes based on the grid columns that we added in our page.tsx file. And once done, I'm also going to attach the ref. This would ensure that every time the spinner component is in the view, we would call the use effect. I'm going to add the load more 
component inside our page.tsx file to test if this is working as expected. You can see that the intersection observers in view is calling use effect when the spinner component is in the view. Now let's use this information to load more pages. For that, we're going to implement a simple function called load more beers. And the job of this function is to get the data for the next page. And what we will do is we will append the data that we get for the next page with the data that we already have. and also update the pages loaded state. Now we're gonna pass the bears data onto the bears component. I would also add some delay so that we don't hit the rate limit of the API. Since we have used the beers component inside our client component, it is no longer a server component. Hence, we need to mark it accordingly to avoid confusion. And once that's done, let's call our function inside use effect and try to run the app again. Our app is working great. Just a small touch in order to make our app feel like infinite crawl. I'm actually gonna cycle the number of pages we use so that it can go on forever. All right, so with this change, our beautiful infinite scroll app is ready. If you have any questions or comments that you want to ask me, please leave them in the comments below or you can talk to me on my Discord channel. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more and I will talk to you soon.